Welcome back to another episode of That's Wild, the podcast. I'm Lauren Whittington. I'm Alex Sachs. Okay, so today we wanted to really dive into kind of our health and wellness journeys and why that's so important to us, why you're going to hear a lot from health and wellness experts and just about health and wellness topics as we go forward on the podcast. So why don't you give us a backstory into your, okay. your health journey? Okay, so um, oh gosh, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I was like, bought and paid for by the pharmaceutical company. I was like proud that the Walgreens people knew my name every week or however often I was picking up my prescriptions and I was gaining weight and I was always tired. I remember sitting on the couch thinking, gosh, I'm tired of being tired. I'm always so tired. Um, but I didn't know there was any other way. I mean, that's just the way I, I ate whatever I wanted and for the longest time, it served me fine, served me well because I you was didn't young. have any issues. I was yeah. young. I was working, like working out, playing sports, whatever. Like you know. Um, but then things changed after I had my son. First of all, I was a large pregnant lady, <laughs> really large. Well, you went from really. Small. I mean, I gained like almost like seventy pounds. Like it was a lot. a lot. Um, like my feet would hurt when I would step out of bed in the morning. Like, oof. I do think you were very, very swollen. Too. Like I was. you were water retention. But I mean, a lot of it had to do with the way I was eating and treating my body and whatever. Um, so anyway, I guess the major change came after I had my son. Um, like six months in, my mom was working out a lot. My mom was going through all of these health issues herself. She has Hashimoto's. She has a lot of autoimmune conditions, issues that she's been dealing with for a long time and she had to go gluten-free, dairy-free, all the frees. Um, um, and she's the- still working on it, but she's so much better. She's lost a ton of weight. She looks great, but that kind of opened my eyes and I also didn't want to go in that direction. And so in order to basically save myself from mm-hmm. the suffering, because <clears throat> I was being put on thyroid medication, which if you don't know, Hashimoto's is your immune cell is attacking your thyroid. Yeah, it's not that your thyroid is not functioning correctly. It's that the Hashimoto's is affecting the thyroid and making it not function as well. Yeah, so anyway, um, that's when I started doing my workouts just at home. I love at-home workouts. They're my favorite thing to do, especially with a kid. Yeah. Because I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to impress anybody. A kid or three. (laughs) I can just, yeah, I have three. We both have three. Uh, But I could just do it at home. Nobody's watching me. Get it done. So I started doing my at-home workouts. I started doing, they have a, con- like, we, I don't know if I can talk about it. You can talk about it. Okay. Beach, it's body now. Well, beach body is mm-hmm. what it was. 21 Day Fix is how I started doing the containers, which was just like this um, portion control situation, yeah. which was like, for me, huge. I mean, you still do it, right? I still do it. Yeah. It's huge because innately in me, I'm a fat girl. I just want to eat, 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 eat. I love food. Um, But the portion control situation was perfect because I was eating, sometimes it's more food than I can even eat. Yeah. It really is. I find it more, I have to force myself when I'm doing it. And side note, when we met, she was already using like every body program, doing the portion control. I was a coach and I was like, and I was a coach for six years. And I was like, how are you not doing this? How are you not selling it? You're the biggest like product yeah. of the product. Still am. Still, you know, am. still is to this day. More <laughs> than me. I, I I let it go by the wayside a little bit. And it just is kind of like funny that our personalities are like, no, she's doing it because it keeps her regimented. It's It works for her. Yes. The last and thing just, she's going to do is be like, buy this from me. I don't want to turn it into a job and then be miserable. Like yeah. I want it to be fun. <laughs> yeah. Stuff. Keep it fun. Yeah. So I, I, it changed my life. It changed my life. It did. Because it helped me. A, when I saw the weight falling off and how much, how good I felt, it was like, I didn't want it to stop. And I still don't want it to stop. Like I'm, I don't want to ever feel the way I felt before. Yeah. And, but that has slowly turned into this journey because I mean, it, and it's always a journey because there's always more that, to learn. There's always more to like dig into, but that's when you start learning about, you know, organic foods and I mean, GMOs and just Mm -hmm. like all these things that open your eyes as you go along in your health journey. And so that's just where I'm at right now is just continuing to grow and better myself so that I don't ever feel that way again. And that I don't ever even go near that sickness, that, that path that my body was headed towards. And I don't Mm -hmm. like, I don't want to deal with it. I just want to feel good. And I want my, I want to be here for my kids and I want my family 
to be healthy and good too. And I know it's not always easy for them either because I don't buy all the snacks that I grew up with that, you know, sometimes their friends have and they're like, well, mom, why don't you? I'm like, because no. Like yeah. we don't, you can have that it's every like, once in a while. Why can't we have pop tarts and hot pockets? <laughs> right, like no Gatorade, sorry, artificial dyes. Like I'm crazy now, got it. But like I know too much now. It's like once you go down that rabbit hole, yes, you know, yeah. And so I tell think, me about you. Well, and I think it's interesting too to know, like when you're saying, like now I know too much, that you didn't come to this place like the traditional way. No. Like you weren't like, oh, my thyroid's wrong. So I went to the doctor and they put me on thyroid medication and I guess that's all I can do. You know, you you were like, no. I, and I think it's important to note too, like if you're listening and you're like, that's me. I, I don't want to get out of the bed in the morning. I don't feel good. I think it's just because I'm getting older or maybe because I've had three or four kids or whatever that's like. That's not true. Yeah. Um, but we believe this because yeah. this is what we're told is like, well, get on medication. If the medication doesn't work, then it doesn't work. You know, and like, you just keep slugging it out. And then you try another out. medication. Then you try another medication. Like you were also on allergy shots for oh. how many years? I mean, your Over whole life. a decade. For a whole life. But this is the thing. Now I'm on zero prescriptions. Zero. Okay. And so I guess that's what I'm saying is what, I guess what made you go, okay, there's got to be another way or, I mean, how did you know, like, I'm going to start looking into this different way? Because we've been talking about this as a big part of what we talk about a lot together is that this whole medical system. And I think we all saw it in COVID, whether you believe, you know, this side or that side or whatever it looks like, nobody's telling you the truth. You know, like I remember when COVID happened, my husband has like three, three different friends, best friends that he grew up with that are doctors. Every single friend said something totally different, had a totally different take on where it came from and how it manifests and how you feel and what it can do and all these things. And it was just like this wake up call moment to me that was just like, okay, so now I need to trust for myself. Like, Mm -hmm. okay, I can't just trust a doctor off the street. They have the same research at their fingertips that I do. I mean, you go to medical school, you learn about anatomy, you learn about surgery, all these things. And then like you become a doctor and you're practicing on people, but it doesn't mean that you start learning about all the like, you know, like we've talked to doctor friends of ours where it's like, yeah, I don't dive into research every day. Like I run a practice. I'm not like diving into every new drug and what's in it and that kind of thing. So it's like for for me too, it was kind of an uphill battle because people in your life think because of COVID and because of all that stuff that if you want to go a different direction and you're like, I don't trust doctors, that like you're crazy. You're a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist and all this stuff. And yeah. what I think we both learned was There's so many people out there who have this, this is what I'm going to say earlier, is that like, you don't know how much you'll do in the quest of having good health until you feel like you are dying. Like you feel like I'll do anything. I'll do anything to feel better. But people do say that, but they won't, they won't do anything. They'll just keep taking a new medication, keep taking a new medication. They still feel like crap. They still feel terrible. And it's like, no, you won't do anything. If you... If you want, change is hard. If you want to change, you, and I'll tell you this right now, it's not easy for me to every single day go out and work out, to eat healthy, to do these things when very easily I could easily not be doing any of that. But I feel so much better doing those things. Yeah, I was going to say, you're definitely a person that is motivated by, if I don't do these things, I know how I'm going to feel and I don't want to feel that way. Like if I eat this, I know how I'm going to feel. If I drink this, I'm going to have a headache. I'm going to feel nauseated. Like you're so motivated. And I think that is hard for people when they don't give things up, when they don't even try it, because then they think there's no way I could do that. Like I remember even when I was doing 75 hard, people would be like, I'm like, Oh, here's all the things you have to do. But like, you can do it. You can do it. And at that time I had three little kids. My husband travels eight months out of the year And I was like, no, no, I can work out two times a day for 45 minutes each. And I can drink a gallon of water a day. It's totally fine. And I can have two clients that I'm working with and running my own business as an entrepreneur. And I can be the MC for this organization and (laughs) introduce these amazing people. And I did it. And, but then I also realized like the big kicker for people is to not drink and alcohol, which I think is so interesting because it's like, these are the things that we do in our health is we go, I'm so sick. I'll try anything. You know, like you hear people say, like she was saying, people say they'll try anything, but then they'll be like, Oh no, no, hold on. 
I'm not going to stop drinking alcohol. Yeah. I'm not going to stop eating sugar. I'm not going to give up gluten. Like, yeah, that's no. insane. Like, no. that's wild. I'm not going to give up gluten. I, and then you don't make any progress at all because you're not, you're, you're clinging to what's making you sick because you're addicted, probably. 1,000%. Like, if you cannot stop drinking for a week, you're probably an alcoholic. I mean, I'm just going to, you know, if you can't give up bread for a week, and, and, you know, processed carbs, you're most likely very addicted to sugar. If you can't stop drinking a diet Dr. Pepper, you're addicted to caffeine. Like, and I'm not saying addicted is like bad or whatever. Like these substances are what addict you, but then it makes us as a people go, there's no way I could cut that out. I'm allowed that. I don't have that much in this life. Yeah. I want my caffeine. I want my wine. I want my, you know, and then you live in this cycle where it's like, I don't know. I've tried everything air quotes. I've tried everything. And it's like, you haven't tried everything. No. When you when you eliminate things and you go, oh my gosh, my neighbor right down the street is a really good friend of mine. She's in her 70s. She just went through this whole, you know, Sherlock Holmesing of her symptoms with a holistic doctor. Mm -hmm. And she found out she has Hashimoto's mm -hmm. in her 70s. Mm -hmm. But she's been having this really bad, like RA symptoms, rheumatoid arthritis symptoms for years. Mm -hmm. She did an elimination diet. And she's like, I feel so good. My joints don't hurt. Every All her swelling and inflammation has gone down. And it's like, she would have never, in 70 years, she didn't go, I'm just going to not drink wine. By the way, it's one of her very favorite things in the world. Yeah. And I'm going to not eat gluten. Her daughter was celiac. And she was like, well, I don't have an issue like that. I don't get sick. I don't, you know, but when but she finally, sick. you are sick. That's That's why I think we're so obsessed is because we realize like, if I have chronic pain everywhere, I'm sick. If I have, you know, if it, maybe I'm not like, I can push through. I can do all these hard things. I can mother, I can work, I can do all the, but like, you're sick, you know? Um, and so that's why we really have gone, we have really delved into the holistic. Well, and specifically, like I will say, the big thing is finding a functional medicine doctor yes. or a doctor that will actually find, because I will tell you this, and I'm not putting doctors down because I believe in medicine and I do believe in I doctors. I do too. I believe in medicine for acute illness or acute, like you have to fix a problem or you're going to die. Yes. But functional medicine doctors will find the root cause of what you're having. So doctors typically will take your symptoms and say, okay, you have... A, you have B, you have whatever. Here's a pill. This will make it stop. But that's a Band-Aid. It's not right. getting rid of your symptom. Maybe it feels like it's getting rid of it, but it's just taking it away for the meantime. You get off that medication, it comes right back. Sometimes it's worse. Sometimes you have side effects of that medication, whatever. But it's a Band-Aid. So it's not fixing and getting to the root cause of why you have that. Like, for instance, if you have a headache, oh, maybe you're dehydrated. Like, drink some water. Maybe you have low blood sugar. Like, that's the root cause of the headache, right? So it's just trying to find the root cause of every single situation. And when you do all these labs that a lot of times insurance, unfortunately, does not cover, but if you do all of these labs that a functional medicine doctor will do, you get to the underlying root cause of something, and it's, like, honestly, mind-blowing. 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 It's crazy. I, speaking of root cause, this was a great segue into <laughs> This, okay, this is wild. So for those of you that don't know, and again, this is why when we say we go down these rabbit holes, we do, but it's because we're searching for like, okay, I know something's going on with me like this, like with the functional medicine doctor, when you, when you go have labs done, I'm still waiting on all these labs that I did over the course of like a few months. And I'm going to, basically he's going to Sherlock Holmes all my symptoms and say, okay, this is what I think that's going on. And it's so different than the labs that are run at a medical doctor. So different. A very, very, You're not way getting, more in depth. Way more in depth. You're not getting like, if you, okay, if you suspect that you have some kind of mold sensitivity or whatever, you're not getting like the one thing they're testing for. They're testing for like 10 things. You're not, if they suspect a thyroid issue, they're testing for like three different types of things to see if maybe it is or maybe it's not. Like Lyme. Lyme is very hard to detect. A lot of people who do have Lyme, it will come back in a test that they most likely don't have Lyme. So it takes one of these holistic doctors. And when we say holistic, it means they, yes, they get to the root cause, but because it's a systemic approach of like, okay, like for instance, and we'll put people in the show notes that we can point you to, because I think that's really important. Even something, a free resource that I think is really great is um, Sean Stevenson's podcast. Oh, yes. The Model Health Show. It, I mean, unreal because it's 
all fact based. There's no opinions. It's, it's fact studies, based. Study, study, study. He'll just yeah. go through. He'll it. just back it up, and it's so good. And what I was gonna say is, what's really interesting about this holistic medicine is that nine times out of ten, or I would I would guess probably every single time, unless you've been on pharmaceuticals and you need to wean off of them. 90, I would, I would guess, and don't quote me on this because I'm not a doctor and I'm not a nutritionist, but 90% of the time, the, the protocol that you go on when you do get to the root cause of what's going on with you is natural and found in nature. Yes. And it just has to be taken at the right dosage, the right time, the right, and that is mind blowing to me. I will kind of give you guys a backstory on, on me too. I grew up with a mother who was super duper sickly. She just was a sickly person. We were the same height, which is a little bit above average height for women. We were like a little over five, seven. Um, she was always like 98 pounds her whole life. And to the point where she would say, I'd be like, mom, you're so skinny. I was not, I was the same height, weight, boobs, maturity, everything since about fourth grade. So that that's a story for another time <laughs> that, um, caused a lot of, uh, pain in my, in my adolescence. But I always would be like, you're so skinny. I just want to be skinny like that. And she's like, you know what? When people tell me I'm skinny, they don't say it as a compliment. Mm -hmm. And it's true. I honestly, I, I, I honestly did grow up with a complex because I had a mom who was like real thin and would literally, my mom had a candy drawer in every Island that she lived in. And it looked like Sam's club in there. <laughs> It's, it was Costco. It was like a baseball concession stand. And my kid, our kids would come over and she'd be like, you want a whole bag of Skittles? You want a Snickers? You want, and it was, I think she ate like that because she didn't see anything visible on the outside. She didn't gain weight. She didn't have like heart problems, but she was always an anxious human since she was born. Like she would have a test in second grade. And I remember my grandma saying she would vomit the whole way to Ugh. school. Like just anxious, you know, she lived like that. And I, her doctor, my mom ended up getting cancer, ovarian cancer when she was, oh gosh, my son was like eight months old. So, I mean, I don't even remember when that was, but it was a shock to everybody. However, she was so sickly. She had endometriosis. She had, um, fibroid tumors that she always had. And it was kind of like, you saw it coming, you know, she was always nauseated, always had pains. She had diverticulitis, like all these things. Well, anyway, we go down the road. My mom fought cancer very hard at MD Anderson in Houston for six years and then passed away. When she found the cancer, it was stage four. So, I mean, it was, she fought for a long time. Her doctors were great. But what I, I always will remember was her doctor saying to my mom, you, the reason why your cancer has grown out of control like this is because you live in fight or flight. You have to find a way to physically lower Things like your cortisol levels, your estrogen levels that my mom was not willing to do, which is crazy when you look back and you have an, a renowned oncologist saying, if you can't, I don't, and she was like, I don't care, eat a gummy, you know, like get out of your body, find a way to bring those stress hormones down mm -hmm. or this, the cancer feeds on it. It also yeah. feeds on sugar and yeah car and things like that, you know? So it was, it was crazy to watch my mom fight with like chemo and things like that and, and just fight for her life. But also I was, I mean, I was at a point where I was saying, okay, mom, you love whatever it is. I don't know, some casserole. Well, I'm going to put healthy ingredients in. You'll never even notice it. She would not even take a bite. She'd be like, I'm not eating it. I'm not eating cauliflower rice. That's disgusting. I'm not, she would not do anything on the natural side. Cause yeah. she's like, what's the point? I have cancer. We're fighting it as I'm doing what I can I'm doing what I side. can. Yeah. And I don't ever think my mom ever thought that there's anything she could have done preventative. Yeah. I think she just thought I was going to have cancer. I had endometriosis. I had PCOS. I had, a, I guess I was going to get cancer, you know, which is such a sad thought. Well, we're, we're both going through this testing and trying to get well and all this stuff. And, you know, in that I'm learning so many things. One thing I'm learning and you guys probably can't see, but I have a glucose monitor. I'm learning that balancing blood sugar. I'm not diabetic or pre-diabetic has so much to do. Balancing blood sugar and digestion has so much to do with the way your body basically like, um, takes in what you're putting into your body. So whether it's like 
chemicals, whatever, and what you eat and drink. For me, I started getting allergic to gluten, allergic to soy. I just turned 39 years old. I am middle-aged and I'm having all these food allergies. And what I've learned is, and this is for another time, I would, I would encourage you guys to look up Dr. Maggie Yu. Um, incredible. You can find so much free content of hers on YouTube, but she basically is like digest, poor digestion and crazy blood sugar is what a lot of times feeds these autoimmune diseases. I now know that I have multiple autoimmune diseases, which is crazy to think because it's very hard to control an autoimmune disease. Well, and side note, typically if you have one, you have at least two. Mm -hmm. So that's just another aside. Yeah. I've already been diagnosed two from like just getting my lab results back. Um, and yeah, it, anyway, and that's, that's probably for a more in-depth question you know, podcast with an expert, but we were going down this road. I, Oh, another person that I do want to recommend and we both love her and I am a member of hers is Dr. Jess. Um, Dr. Jessica Petros. She was a medical MD and she was actually, I forget what it's called. Like, a, um, I forget what her hospital, um, title was, but she quit medicine. She gave up her board certifications, um, and became a functional, uh, functional medicine doctor. And I love following her on Instagram. She's like Dr. Jess MD, I think. Yeah. Dr. Jess MD. Yeah. She's and her membership is called wellness plus. So for a lot of these things where you are kind of Sherlock Holmes in your symptoms, she does tons of webinars. She talks about parasites. I know it sounds disgusting, but like you most likely have parasites yeah. in your body like and they're, everybody, they're very hard to, to purge yourself of. Um, but it's, it's these protocols and what you can do and how you can find out. I found my doctor through her. Dr. Jabin Moore is out of, um, I think he's out of, uh, I'm going to get it wrong, but he's out of like Missouri and we do tele, tele appointments. Um, but just, just a wealth of knowledge. But as we're going through this, I found from Dr. Jess, she was talking about root cause. And a lot of these holistic doctors will say the very first thing I want you to go look at is the amalgams and the root canals in your mouth. And basically there's, they'll say that like the mouth is like your second gut. Like if you think about it, so much bacteria, so much stuff comes in through our mouth, our teeth. And she mentioned the documentary root cause. And I went and watched it. You cannot watch it on Netflix anymore. It was pulled very quickly off of Netflix because, um, the dental association of America actually pulled it off Netflix because it's, it's letting you peek behind the curtain and see why we do what we do in this medical system now and how, how I guess destructive it can be to our health, but it's pretty amazing. It's basically the very simple idea is like with root canals, do you have any other organ in your body that dies and you leave it in? I mean, just critical thinking, like, is there any other body? Like if you're, you know, even things that can regenerate themselves, like if your liver died, you couldn't leave it in. You would need to replace it. You know, if your spleen, that kind of thing, you don't leave it in dead, right? But you do with a tooth. Um, and it's crazy since then. And we hope to have them on our podcast, but oh, yes. Oh my gosh. We both go to Adore Dentistry in Houston. They're a no, biological dentist. Yes. They're a holistic biological dentist, which is wildly different than a dentist. My first appointment, I was there for three and a half hours. Yeah. And they do all these scans. Cone and, beam like, scans. Things that... Most dentists will never do. Will never, ever, ever do. Dentists, if you've ever been in the dentist, it's like, let's do x-rays. Where do you have cavities? Where can we fill those cavities or extract those tooth or do a root canal and move on? Yeah. Um, this was, it was a three and a half hour mind appointment. Mind boggling. Um, it was absolutely mind boggling. What I learned about my root canal was that I have an infection in the canal, in the pocket. So this is the problem with a lot of root canals. Yes. Is you can have an infection still that's just been festering for years and years underneath like guys, the root canal. 26 years I've had that root canal. Nobody's going to tell you that. No. And so I've had that infection. So basically what she said is, yes, we can get it out. Yes, we can do ozone. We can get the infection out. But you have to pull the tooth. But yeah, you have to pull the tooth. You have to get a whole, it's a whole thing. And you can't get a metal implant because you, titanium implant because heavy metals, which we'll talk about later. But you can't, you have to get a zirconia. It's expensive. It's, a, you know, whatever. You have to not have a tooth for like six months. Um, but she basically was like having that infection in that pocket, your body, your, 
and this is probably why I have autoimmunity. This is probably the root cause. My body has been fighting that infection for 26 years. And she was like, so sometimes your immune system will give you 90% and sometimes it's only got 30 because it's fighting that trapped bacterial infection. Disgusting. Like, and that is something that like, you cannot take antibiotics for that. You cannot make it go away. It is literally trapped there underneath the pocket where the root was, where the dead organ now sits in my mouth, which is just so much decay and just disgust. I mean, and then, you know, the amalgams are a whole nother thing because heavy metals. Um, and it's like, they're just secreting into our bodies through vapors. So, I mean, anytime you drink like a hot tea or a coffee and you breathe in, there's some more mercury, which by the way, parasites feed off of heavy metals. Heavy metals yeah. um, so it just becomes a cyclical issue of staying sick. And that's why we care so much about giving you guys information about where can you go to even get information of, you know, I think I have, I, I've been told that I have a low functioning thyroid. How can you get free information? How can you get good information? That's like, okay, well, hold on. Let's go backwards from that. You may have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease that isn't necessarily that you have a low functioning thyroid. It's that you need to get a hold of the Hashimoto's and then your thyroid will function much better. You usually can do that by cutting things out of your diet and supplementing with, you know, some, some holistic supplements. So, I mean, it, it's been a crazy wild ride, but like I, I, what hurts me in my soul is that people don't know this stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. I will tell you this. So at the biological dentist, well, we can probably get into this if we ever get them on the podcast. We would love to have them on the podcast. This is not an ad, but um, <laughs> Dr. Shui and I Dr. Fam, we love them. We both go to their best friends and I go to one and she goes to another one and they're wonderful. But when they did this scan, they scan your airway. Mm. So they, you can see and it'll show like if it's red, it's really narrow. If it's blue, you're good, whatever. Anyway, all of my like sinuses down my airway is like red. And she said, my airway is the size of a toddler's. Like it is tiny. So when I'm sleeping at night, which by the way, I don't know if you know, maybe if you know me well, you do, but I have horrible TMJ. And horrible. so like so bad that I've had surgery on one side. I wear this appliance thing <laughs> to like help align my jaw right now. Um, but, but why you have TMJ is because you're trying to hold your tongue in place when you sleep. Apparently I am in fight or flight all night long because technically I cannot breathe. So I'm trying to breathe. So I'm adjusting my jaw in a certain way, which is causing me to clench, which is causing my TMJ issues. So it's like this whole thing. So they actually do have this appliance that I can wear after I'm done with all of this stuff that I'm doing right now, um, to help widen my airway, which is vital because she said, I... I'm never, ever going to lower my cortisol and stress until I'm out of fight or flight. But when I can't you sleep. get out of fight or flight yes. if I'm still trying to breathe all night long. Yeah. It's and, crazy. And she was really, it's crazy that you go to a dentist and the biggest thing she stresses is good sleep. Yeah. And she was like, if you, she was like, I mean, you're headed towards same thing. I saw my airway and where my, mine was okay in the, um, like my, my, what am I calling that? What is that? Your soft kiss? In my throat, the airway in my throat was fine, but my nasal, like my sinuses yeah. were like almost completely closed. And she said, oh, it looks like you're probably a chronic mouth breather, which I actually was like, there's no way it, it literally pains me to breathe out of my mouth. Like, yeah. there's, and she was like, yeah, while you're conscious, when you're asleep, but when you're asleep and when you're like laying down and your tongue is an issue, you guys, I found out I'm 39 years old. I just found out at this dentist that I have like a severe tongue tie and she was like, Oh, were you breastfed as a child? I was like, no. And she goes, well, you never knew. So I checked all my kids, which she recommends you do. They were not breastfed. Any of them. I mean, judge me. Okay. <laughs> I had a lot going on. I was a single mom for the first one. And I was like, I can't, I can't tie myself to a child for the, I have to work. I mean, unfortunately I did. And then going forward, honestly, I didn't really feel like it was well, natural. Your mom didn't nurse you. My mom didn't nurse me. No. And yeah. my, my ex-husband with my first child, his mom didn't nurse him. And so I just was like, and my best friend at the time, her parents didn't nurse her. So I was just like, I'm not doing it anyway. But she said, because as a child, your mouth doesn't form correctly, your palate doesn't come down Apparently correctly. Apparently breastfeeding helps with that. Yes, to widen your jaw and to have your palate come down. Yeah. And because they didn't, my kids didn't, their 
our palate is so high up. My palate is so high up. It's actually encroaching on my nasal, like my sinus airway. She said, I, even though we're going to do everything that we're going to do here, which she did also recommend me get the appliance. And I even have bone spurs on the inside yeah. of my, because I grind so bad. And she's like, you're grinding because you're trying to keep your, your tongue from going <laughs> into your throat, which is crazy, but it doesn't sit right because of the way my jaw is formed. Anyway, that's the whole thing. But she said, you might definitely look into getting nasal, like sinus um, surgery. She's like, because it's so close and you're never going to be able to breathe freely without having it. So that was just eye opening. But all of this from a dentist. Yeah. So and all of this to say, this is how we got started and focusing in all of this. And so you'll be hearing a little bit about this, a little bit of that all along the way. Because this is the stuff we're so interested in because it's been... Literally life-changing. Yeah. And I think it's interesting to note too that like my husband and, and your husband, I know I can speak for them. They don't have these ailments and they're not interested in like, maybe I should go check out my airway. <laughs> maybe I should go. They're not. A, I always say he's not on the same health journey as me. Yeah. But he, he's started. He has started taking some supplements. He's working out more. Like, you know, it's just little by little. Well, and I think that's different because if you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, I'm good. I eat Pop-Tarts every day and I, you know, I hate every salad I've ever met and whatever you might be. And Dr. Jess talks about this. So I really, I really would, would, I don't know, revert to her on this, but she talks about being a canary in the coal mine and being like a warrior. I think there's lots of different ways you can react to things, but she's saying like canary in the coal mine, which is like me, which is you is if there's something out there that is like basically the canaries in the coal mine would go, hey, don't drink this water mm -hmm. because I drank this water and it made me sick. Somebody else could drink the water and they're fine. So, you know, a lot of a lot of these kind of autoimmunity can stem from a water, um, a water damaged home and mold. Well, if there was mold in my home, and I know this about myself, I, I have even in my home, when we first moved in, I was like, do you smell that? It just smells musty. It just smells... No one else in my family smelled that, but I am the canary in the coal mine where it's like, it hits me. I'm different. I start having a reaction and every, I'm going, Hey guys, this maybe isn't safe, but like for my husband, I don't think he's probably the healthiest on the inside, but he doesn't feel it. Like he doesn't. So that's another thing too. Like, but I will say this too. I think a lot of it is, and I was kind of the same way. Like I thought I was fine. Because that's my normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was tired a lot, but isn't everybody? Right. No. The answer is no. Right. Like, I do not need a nap anymore. I am not tired anymore. Like, things can change. You don't even realize, you know? Yeah. And I think that's the point, too, is like this whole health journey that we've been on. And there's so many things to it. And there's so many people that I want to bring on and talk to. But it's that we have changed. We have, like, sought out, you know, different things that we can do. And we feel better. So that's why I want to kind of get into this and dive into this. It's not like we're like, oh, we've gone, we've done every test and no. we're miserable, you know? <laughs> um, we've, we've done a lot. And I'm, I mean, I, I want to share it with other people so that they can know exactly how they can start feeling better too. For sure. So I think we're good. I think we're good. <laughs> so we'll dive into that next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is wild. I, did you see, I don't know if you saw it, but did you see the Robert F. Kennedy, Joe Rogan podcast? No, I have not. But did I, you hear what it was about? on my to-do list. Okay. Yes, I know what it's about. Here's what I like about it. At the whole beginning of it, Joe Rogan has like this preamble and he goes on and he's like, okay, every other time I've seen you on something or you've been a guest somewhere, people don't like you. Like they don't right. want you on. They don't want to talk to you. And he was saying basically that he read his book. If you haven't read his book, it's very interesting. You should go check it out. It's about Anthony Fauci. The real Anthony Fauci. Yeah, and it's it's pretty crazy. And and his whole history is pretty amazing how like, I mean, he was he was like a like a uh, environmentalist, you know, like he was fighting the good fight for environment. And in all of that, he found that like, you know, he's basically suing coal mine companies saying like, you're the reason why fish has mercury in it. Like, and I feel like that's such an advertisement type of thing. Like we just think that fish just have mercury in them. It's like, no, fish have mercury in them because of the runoffs of like oil and gas and coal mines and all this. That's why they have it in there. It's like this, I don't know if it's radiation or like the nuclear, whatever product that's, that, that's produced <laughs> that goes into the water and the fish eat it and they get it. And he was saying what they were learning was that 
it also happens in fresh water. Like there's almost nowhere you can go and like get fish and not have a little bit of mercury in it. Well, what these women started following him all around the country. And he's like, look, at this point, I'm suing companies over mercury. I know about mercury. And he's like, these women were showing up. They were very polished. And they were saying, well, if you're so worried about the mercury that's going into the water, what about the mercury going into these vaccines? And they very much believed that their children were affected by vaccines and all this. So anyway, Joe Rogan goes on this whole, like, I read your book and I'm like, if this guy is lying in this book, he would be like sued to where there's no way he could get out of it. Right. And Joe Rogan actually says without saying like, I pretty much believe everything you have to say at this point. And to note, and we've talked about this before, that he is, that um, Kennedy is a Democrat. Mm-hmm. He's a liberal. He's more on like the progressive side. I hate that we can't even talk about mercury and vaccines without talking about being liberal or conservative. That's ridiculous. You shouldn't have anything to do with each other, but he is on the liberal side and they tend to, you know, in today's, which side are you on game that we play? They tend to go towards some more like vaccines are great. They're safe. They're wonderful. It's the pharmaceutical companies are great. You know, all the, and he is just like, no, this is not okay. And like busting it wide open. And Joe Rogan is going there. Like he's like, I agree with you. You know, I mean, it's it's crazy to me. I feel like in the last few months, we are seeing such a switch on like like these on major podcasts, on network news. I mean, Kaylee McEnany is doing a book that's all about Christianity and they talk about it. And I know it's it's on Fox News, but like they talk about it on Fox News. They talk about, you know, Christianity and her journey. And then they give their own anecdotes of how the Lord helped them and all that. And I just am seeing like this, kind of eye-opening time right now where people are just like, yeah, I'm coming around. Like, I'm starting to think that, well, I think a lot of it had to do with what was trying to be forced upon people for Mm -hmm. so long. And then people pushing back and being like, hold up. And then they, that's what's getting this wheel in motion. Cause it's like, that's not normal. No. Like, that's not normal to force anything on anybody. On anybody. No. But also- And then to say, we don't want the studies to be shown for 79 years or whatever it was. <laughs> and then also, we do, I mean, it's like, it's too much of a smoking gun. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I've talked to other people who were like, oh my gosh, I, I was like the first, I was first in line to get that vaccine. And then they were like, I think that's why I'm having this happen to me. And I think that's why, I think it's- People's eyes are open and you can't pull the wool over people's eyes forever. We used to say like, how many years is this going to take for people to keep signing up for this stuff? Yeah. I mean, and I just think it's, it's crazy that now we're seeing it on very large stages where people are going, there might be something to that. I mean, I, you know. Well, and I think his whole thing too is he is Robert Kennedy. He is, he's had a vaccine injury. Yes. That's why his voice is the way it is. Yes. If you've ever heard him speak. He yeah. sounds different. Yeah. And it's because of a flu shot, I believe, that he had a yeah. side effect. It's a side effect of the flu shot. Um, so he's very passionate about this kind of stuff. So yeah. I am interested in for sure looking up that yeah. podcast. So. It's pretty good. I would look at it. My husband was listening to it who's not interested in this type of thing. And he was like, uh, just did you know, right up your alley. You should go give this a listen. So go check it out if you're interested in this kind of thing. But it's a, it's a different take. Joe Rogan still is a little like dipping his toe in the water. He's like, a lot of people think you're wrong, and I thought you were wrong, and da 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 da. And anyway, tell us about what you yeah. want to say. But it's pretty good. I would definitely, definitely give it a listen for 